Good evening for Madison Community Television and Daniel Hand High School Tiger point 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 Football. Point the captain this is Kent Sprague with school, Frank Tardoff today. Gentile, Paul Sprague James behind the Warner, camera. Ryan Len Richards Dorhouse, doing the directing. And Dan this is Game Zipero 7 from uh, Notre, Dame, Notre Dame of Fairfield today. Uh, welcome, Frank, uh, on a morning game. Well, thank you very much. We will have this game going before long, but uh, you might very briefly mention about the Notre Dame team and about any injuries of hand. Okay, it's it's real good, and uh, like I say, welcome to Monday Night Football on Saturday morning, as a matter of fact. Uh, please, uh, during the game, game, we're going to have trouble with these speakers the that are right at our, our feet here at the press Peter box. Johnson, the uh, but in, as we go Mandel. along here, the, the uh, Lancers have a very good record this year for Notre Dame. So far, it's 3-2-1. and one. Uh, The two t losses they've had have been to Stratford and Bunnell. Which means that two, good uh, teams. two very good teams, if you will. Ones that we have we've played one off so far, and Stratford is leading the conference. So that's something that uh, uh, Hand is going to have to be up for. As far as the injury situation with Hand, we know that's been a plague all season. Um, <clears throat> however, we're out picking back up. Uh, suited up for the game is Pete Clark, excellent, excellent athlete, mul multiple sport athlete, if you will. And uh, we're hoping that he might get a little bit of time out there just to kind of get the cobwebs out. He hasn't played since actually scrimmages in August. He hasn't played it down all season, but uh, we're glad to see him back. He, oh, yes. he will be wearing number 18 today, by the way. That's correct, and, and we're looking forward to it. Great kid. Like to receive, uh, you know, a number of other players are banged up, but playing hurt, if you will. And we won't say who those are because we don't want to, uh, you know, make them think otherwise, but uh, what we do have is uh, Matt Gentile playing hurt. Uh, we knew that from last week. Uh, but, but he, he is, is in uniform. He's in uniform and should get some playing time in. Uh, just talking to his dad downstairs, and uh, he said, yeah, he's playing hurt, but uh, he's, he's hoping to get in there. He's a little bit discouraged uh, just before, before, because of the season, you know, kind of looking that way. But uh, he's also a good shot stop on a baseball team. Please stand so you got to watch out for that season Lincoln. coming up, too, in a small school like Hand is. Uh, but other than that, uh, we may be getting back. Uh, Timmy Cunningham says he may be back next week. Uh, looks like a hyperextended knee of some sort there, uh, and a number of others. Here we go with the National Anthem. We will have this game underway right after the National Anthem. Daniel Hand has won the toss to begin the game. Uh, Notre Dame of Fairfield will kick off. Back deep to receive for Hand are Sean Lynch and Eric Hamill. Kicking off, by the way, is the quarterback, uh, starting quarterback. It looks like for uh, he doing multiple low, chores, if you will. A low bouncer picked up by uh, Sean Lynch at the 15 in a middle uh, return, and Lynch brings it almost back to the 50, about the 47, 48 yard line. Excellent return. Yeah, he and you know he was uh, tripped John up by the kicker, the kick uh, number 11, with John Wilson, the quarterback. Wilson, so uh, he was the last guy before Painter. So an excellent return by Sean Lynch uh, from the 15 back to the uh, 48. And Daniel Hand, uh, first play from scrimmage coming up. In the backfield for Hand is Scott Hevesy, quarterback. Handed off to Eric Hamill in the backfield, and he gets across the 50 to about the 49, 48. Yeah, he, he was really hit right at the line of scrimmage, and his second effort dive forward took him for another yard and a half, two yards on that kid. Nice second effort on yeah, that. Yeah, that carry stopped by Manny Dominguez. Second and seven. About a three-yard gain by Eric Hamill, in at the blocking position. Fullback is Chris Doraz. Pitch this time to the right to Hamill. Hamill's got a little bit of corner and gains another two yards down to the uh, 46. Uh, that was a good strong two, two and a half yards on that one. And nice pitch out, too. Pitch out right on hand as far as uh, uh, the pitch went from Scott out there to Eric. Uh, did a good job on that. That will bring up a third down and a little over three for hand. Split wide to the left is Peter McGrath. It's a tweener here. Do you run or do you pass? It's handed off to Doraz, and Doraz bulls his way forward, and he looks like he's a little bit short. Maybe a, less than a yard short of a first down from this angle. That's right. What do you do now? Like I said, it was a tweener, but certainly Chris is a go-to guy uh, most of the time, short yardage position. You're, you're showing fourth and about one. Fourth and one at the 43, and uh, no question here. Hand comes right out the run. Well, well, I wouldn't be sad. They got the power eye showing out there. Power eye formation, uh, strong to the right. 
Hand it off to Hamill. Hamill goes to the right side. He should have the first down before he's pushed back. On forward motion, he should get it. I know he was past it. I could tell myself. But uh... And where the referee's got his foot, he's uh, down. He's got the first down by about a foot. There you go. That was a different uh, power eye usually with hand is to the fullback and up the center. Well, you know, for a off tackle, but uh, they went a little bit wide on that, and it seemed to work. I also think partly on that Eric it looked like he took his own uh, lead a little bit and bounced off and turned took it a little bit wider than Norm. So a first down on uh, on a fourth down play uh, at the 42 yard line. Daniel Hand's first possession. Two men split wide left. Hand off to Doraz again. Runs over right tackle and is hit immediately. Yeah, he was hit by a host of players that time. They didn't fool anybody out there. It looked like he got to the 40. Eyes on the carry stop by Sean Wright. I'd play, run that again, but with some play action in that over here to left, and you've got a touchdown, let me tell you. Second and nine. Chris Doraz was hit hard, uh, gain, one yard gain, second and nine. Defense. Defense. Scott Hebesey looking to throw to the left side, and it's thrown over the head of Peter McGrath, incomplete pass. Oh, that's a good way to start. Get a, get a couple passes in early to kind of open it up and make him honest as far as the linebackers go. Okay. You know it's incomplete. It serves a purpose. Up a third and nine for the Tigers. Third and nine for um, Ham. And into this game with a perfect record so far. They've met their first objective this year, Frank. They are guaranteed a winning season at 6-0. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, neat. Uh, a lot of young players out there. It uh, bodes well. Everson looking to throw. And he's got a man over there, Sean Lynch, complete first down, down near the 25. Nice, nice move out there, Sean. He, he was taking the, uh, the corner deep out there, and then he button hooked in tight and uh, right on the sidelines. Nice two, pass. Two receivers on the right sideline. The ball is fired to 26. First Sean down Lynch. for hand. Sean Lynch made the reception. by Troy Maxwell and Greg Capola. That's a first and 10 for hand. And off this time to uh, Mike Burrell, who crosses the 25 to about the 24. Okay, first run to the left uh, so far out of about eight plays here. Uh, again, try to keep the uh, defense honest out there. Normally, hand has gone to the That's right. On the play stop by Sean Wright. I think probably you get second more second. plays to the right normally in hand's history. I see. I see that Matt Gentile is in as a receiver, split wide to the left this time. Hamill on the backfield, tailback. Hand it off to Hamill, and Hamill uh, gains a yard or so, and that's off. Boy, that's a tough yard, too. One, two, three, four, five blue jerseys coming up. Eric Hamill on the carry stop by Mike Coco. It looked like one of those rough ones. This is usually a very physical team. Notre Dame is, even though their record is uh, overall against ha hand, is, uh, doesn't show well. They're very, very physical. If we remember last year, uh, Notre Dame did beat hand, and that was uh, Notre Dame's only win in the conference all season long. And off this time to Hamill, and he goes by right tackle again. And not much gain there either. Yeah, that's so gonna bring up fourth down play. That's right. That that play right there usually, uh, yeah, usually on the carry, works real well for him, but uh, right. the hole isn't as big uh, right now. At least the last couple of plays, the hole's not as big. Whether it's the defense doing the job or the uh, hand not quite getting off the ball fast enough, we'll have to watch that. The ball's at the 21. That brings up fourth down and about five. Peter Lawler in uh, motion right. Hevesy looking to throw. Looking for Lawler. And yeah. 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 Knock, knocked down at the 10 yard line. Yeah. Incomplete yeah. pass. That was a fourth down play. Notre Dame gets the ball. Broken up by Evan Bernard. Now, okay, hand moved it down and uh, just kind of sputtered out a little bit down there. Notre Dame will take over. It'll be first and 10. That's as good as a punt in the end zone or missed field goal or anything. Uh, so they're right on the 20. Now well, let's see what they have. This looks like a pretty good sized team, uh, Frank. Uh, they got some linemen in there that are pretty big, bigger than the hand players. And the movement early in the uh, definitely before offense the, before the, snow, uh, the snap gets off. Yeah, it's going to put uh, Notre Dame in the in the hole. Notre Dame five yard penalty. Yeah, you're right. They do look big out there. They haven't had a chance to really check against their uh, their program here about the size of the starters. But they do supposedly have a couple of pretty good running backs and maybe a good receiver. So we'll have to see how that develops over the game. 
Uh, procedure penalty on first down. That'll bring up uh, a repeat of first down and 15 at the 15. And he's hit at the line of scrimmage, carried forward for about a yard. Boy, he was really hit uh, behind the line of scrimmage. It looked like. That tackle looked like uh, Chris Holt, number 40, was in on. Made the first contact. On the carry, stopped by Mike Anderson. Uh, Gained a couple yards. Yeah, they also uh, Mike Anderson played off his block Atlantic. and got back there which is pretty neat. That was a slow developing play a little bit as a counter play and uh, everything coming to the right and the, the run came into the left. But Mike, nice play. Mike Salmani and Mike Anderson are the uh, two down men in the middle of the line. Uh, Chris Holt and Greg DeConcilius are uh, on the outside. Notre Dame looking to throw, and oh. Chris Holt is right there. Also 76, Anderson. That's right. There we go loss. for a sack. A sack Holt and Anderson had him uh, surrounded, both sides. So third down and long coming up. Third and about close to 20. Almost looked like a little confusion in the uh, Notre Dame backfield right then. Uh, didn't think it was the coverage. He looked like he had an option to pass, but uh, couldn't pick up on it. And that was, but that was great coverage of Holt coming in from his end position, and again uh, Anderson coming in. So we'll get some of the rest of the defensive players. Uh, Andy Drennan and uh, Chris uh, Doraz are the inside linebackers. Third and long, and it's a pitch to the right and a run to the right, and Peter Lawler stringing it out and strings it out very well. Find the tackles made by uh, Matt Gentile. Push it out of bounds. Boy, now this is a strange play when you have a third down and, down 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 and uh, almost 15 yards, or about 15. It's very strange to call that play. It must be about two. They must know something about 32 that we don't know. So Please. that's fourth and long coming up, fourth and uh, about 18, yeah. 17, 18 yards. Yeah, hand receivers lining up on a 50 here, so. Sean Lynch and Eric Hamill are back to receive the punt. And it's a low snap and dropped, and he does get it out, a floater. And that's going to be difficult to catch. Uh, Sean Lynch gets away from it, lets it run. Rolls dead at the 46. Boy, old Sean, he was making me a little nervous there, Sean. <laughs> I thought you were going to put your hand on that thing. And Alan Walker's punch is down on the 47-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for hand. That was one of those uh, knuckleball floater punts that. that's hard to catch. I mean, that thing seemed to sit up, up there in the air for a long, long time. A lot of hang time on that punt. So Daniel Hand in good position at the 46, uh, second possession. The first time they took it from the 15 all the way down to the 21, where they ran out of downs. Eric Hamill carries the ball over the right side, gains a yard or so. Okay, working that right side again as far as Hand's concerned. In the line uh, for a hand, uh, number 72, Rob Mason is one of the tackles. Joel Donnelly is on the other side. The guards are Rob Dezima and Andy Drennan. Gentile in motion right. Scott Hevesy looking to throw. He's looking long. And McGrath is down there, and the ball is almost caught and dropped. Well, that was one well of a defensive play also. Two men covering uh, Peter McGrath, and uh, both of them had their hands on the ball. Yeah, that was an excellent opportunity for Notre Dame interception. Uh, coverage by one man on McGrath was absolutely tight as a glove. The other man actually had free reign on it and uh, seemed to hesitate going for the ball. I thought he had the position on it. Uh, that's uh, their mistake, and it's a benefit for hand, so uh, we'll third, take them that way. Third and long coming up. Third and about seven. Hevesy looking to throw. A flag is thrown in hands backfield and a complete pass to McGrath. But I believe that one's going to come back. The flag is thrown in hands backfield. Yeah, I'm afraid of that. That's what that looks like, all right. A beautiful pass. Uh, McGrath is not well behind. So uh, he had gotten really behind that defense. And, uh, Illegal motion by uh, Hand, which will bring that play back. Yeah, well, third down, and now it's going to make it a good about 12 yards on the end. Just roll it! Kind of too bad, I think, but it's the break of the game. Okay, what do you think now? Definitely another the pass play. About third and 12. And put Sean Lynch on the right side. Uh, 
Lawler in the slot right. Nevis, he rolls to the left. Now he's looking to throw across the middle, complete pass. Uh, that's near a first down. Boy, I think it's forward motion. I think he, well, I think he set out. That's Lawler. Yeah, go Pete Lawler on that. They're not gonna give him that much, though. No, they're not gonna give it to him. He actually uh, came out, turned his back. Oh. Scott Actually, his forward progress is a little bit more than that, I believe. Yeah, but that'll bring up a fourth down. The ball was at the uh, 45, just across the 45. Yeah, so it's a shy yard there. And yeah, we'll go for it. Got to go for this one. Split backfield this time. Two receivers put to the left. And it's handed off to Doraz. Doraz has got the first down. No question there. Well, you know, the way they were lined up that time, I couldn't quite see Chris's number, but again, that's his uh, normal thing for a short yard position. And, uh, he has that forward lean where he's not very far off of the ground, uh, difficult target to, to tackle. He hits that line like a sledgehammer. First down for hand. Ball now down at the 42. Pitch right to Eric Hamill. Hamill cuts it back, gets just across the 40. Oh, they're really keying on Eric. I think they've got a they've got a linebacker keying right on him by the look of it, which is understandable because there's no question he's become the um, the long yardage guy if possible. Eric Hamill on the carry. The tailback we go to from that standpoint, but uh, so they've got somebody keying right on Eric nine. whenever he's in there. Gain about a yard to the 40. Second down and nine. Gentile and Lynch put to the left. High formation. Scott Hevesy all the way at quarterback. Hevesy rolling to the left. Now he's going to bring it down and run, and not much place to go there. Loss of a yard, I'd say. Lost about a yard. Scott Hevesy had a carry. Stopped by Mike Coco. And he didn't Devon have anybody Lewis. open over on this side that he was rolling through, so he obviously had to kind of eat the ball and try to make the best of it. Right then, he was running out of uh, real estate. That will bring up third and a little over 10. We're down to uh, two minutes, five seconds left in the first quarter. No score and second possession. Two receivers this time to the right. Obviously looking to throw, and it's in and out of the hands of uh, one man and picked up by uh, Gentile, and that should be a first down. Wow, the old tip play worked on that one. Good heads up on that. You know, I was saying earlier when we were talking about injuries, he's playing a little hurt, but he is a shortstop on a baseball team. That looked like shortstop hands that time to me. That ball was not thrown to Matt Gentile. It was thrown to Peter McGrath, who went high in the air and uh, batted it up in the air, and Gentile came back and got it and went forward for first down. Well, you know, I think Pete's a basketball player. <laughs> so uh, he did the old tip drill in basketball, and Matt picked up on it. Ball at about the 23. It's a lay this time to Hamill right up the middle and gains a couple of yards, but those are tough yards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Eric's, uh, Eric's getting some pretty good hammering done today on him. As a sophomore, though, he's got those moves that are really looking good. Well, on the carry, stop by uh, you're going to give him a rest and bring in Burrell. Mike, and eight. Mike Burrell brings in a play. Tim Hevesy over the ball at center. Drennan and Dezima are the two guards. And off to Doraz, and there's a little bit of an opening, and Doraz is still going forward. Yeah, he's, near, he's near another first down. Boy, from our angle on that, you could see that hole open, and Chris saw it the same way we did. He hit it a lot faster than you and I could do, Ken. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Interesting, as, as people are watching number 30 out there today, both Kent and I were uh, talking to his dad, Mike. Uh, here we are at about 10.30, quarter of 11. Saturday, I mean, Chris is supposed to be at 3.30 this afternoon in Fall River in a wedding. Uh, I'm surprised, maybe under that number 30 jersey, he's got his uh, tux on. <laughs> he was moving fast for us there. And the measurement gives hand a first down you bet. about the 13. Let me tell you, he got enough daylight mm -hmm. through there that uh, they gave it to him, uh, gave him the room from a line standpoint, and Chris took advantage of it. That was a good run. First down for Hand, exactly one minute left, first quarter, no score. Hand's second possession, and they're driving the ball again. About the 14, there goes Chris again. And there's uh, Chris Doris, who takes it to the 10. Okay, they can get another first down before they go in if they have to on that. Let's hope they don't have to take the next first down, but it's there if they uh, take it up in little chunks, if you will. 
Second and seven. Into the li in the line for hand are uh, uh, 72, Rob Mason. Here's one tackle, Joel Donnelly is the other, Mike Richards is the tight end, and a complete pass on the far side to Sean Lynch, and he's uh, down inside the five to about the two, it looks like. So it should be a first down. Sean Lynch's pass is complete to Sean Lynch. No, no, I, I agree. Our cameraman, Paul, just said he hasn't seen that pass before. Maxwell. A quick right. slant in, a first down at the two-yard line. Yeah, that's normally a tight end type of play. And... Uh, First and goal, here's this power eye to the right. And the referee stop play. Offside Notre Dame. That'll be half the distance to the goal line, oh, which will be a about a foot and a half. <laughs> yeah, a foot and a half that way. Oh, yeah. Well, that won't register high in the stats. Or, as as the, yeah, but somebody will still end up having to do something. Uh, first and goal. Put their name point on Monday. They started the clock, and I don't believe they're going to get this one off before the half where the uh, quarter runs out. We're down to two seconds. Uh, there's the end of the first quarter with Daniel Hand at the one yard line. The first quarter, no score. Middle game, nothing. No score. Nothing. Well, it, it hasn't really been what you call a defensive game so far. Time of possession certainly has, has been enhanced. Uh, favor. So it begin the second quarter. Daniel Hand on the one yard line, power eye to the right, and handed off to Brill, who wedges his way oh. forward. Boy, oh boy, I thought and he had gotten there, but no signal. Oh, Rob oh, Mason and Mike Richards are blacking on this side of the line. Uh, tackle and right. Uh, and Barry, tight end. Barry for hand, he stopped Big at the surge on the defensive the standpoint. They did get off balance at that time, I would say. So but, he did not get the touchdown, but he's uh, a matter of inches from it. Second down play coming up. High formation this time. Doraz at fullback. Brill at tailback. And off to... Torres, who plunges right into the end zone, right behind Tim Havasey, uh, center, and uh, the left it guard, hand touchdown. who would be uh, Rob Zima. Daniel Hand scores first uh, early in the second quarter, six to nothing. Well, let me tell you, that, that is a, it was an excellent play call that time, because normally if you're scouting Hand, you're going to see that play again go to the right. Um, did not happen because they gave it off to the left, and Doris took it through a nice big hole, too. Conversion drive by Sean Lynch. Good snap, good placement, good kick. Daniel Hand leads 7 to Sean Lynch's extra point is good. Well, how about that? Good drive by Hand all the way down nothing. there. Had, they, had their back to the wall a little bit and uh, had to make a couple of big third down plays, and they did that as well, uh, thanks to a couple of nice passes and nice run by Chris Torres. So our hand has brought it down and has developed some nice momentum so far, Ken. Sean Lynch is going to kick off back to Hand in the coverage for Hand. Our number 12, Mark Gumkowski, number 86, uh, Eric Frey, among others. And kick low and rolling out of bounds for Hand at about the 25. They have an option to take this ball at the 35-yard line. Out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Take the ball at the 35. <laughs> Well, folks, we have a very small press box up here, and you can tell we have a very vocal uh, Notre Dame coach up here with us, which is okay. Uh, we know that uh, they want to take the ball at the 35, which I would have done, too. <laughs> Not that anybody was going to ask me, Ken. The first attempt for the Lancers from the 35-yard line. So Notre Dame with the ball back and now trailing 7 to nothing. We're with 11.22 left in the second quarter. I've been looking at the line for Notre Dame, both offense and defense, and you're right, Kent, they are big. They all are in the 200, 210 uh, category, pretty much. I'm not sure what that uh, offensive formation is, but they got a stacked eye with three people behind the quarterback, and that play is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. The offensive tackle also the moved first, so there should be an offensive... Uh, oh, there offensive. is a flag down. Yeah. Mike Anderson in on the tackle. Uh, Chris Doris helped uh, clean it up. Definitely, uh, definitely there's offensive movement on that. And Hand will take the penalty. So we have a motion on Notre Dame. The five-yard penalty. Well, it'll still be their first down, and they'll have a 15 to hit it. First is 15 from the 30. Okay. 
Chris Holt and uh, Greg DeConcilius are the two outside people on the uh, front wall of the 4-4 defense for hand. Mike Udicek and Ryan Dores in the backfield defense for hand. Pitch this time to the left. And a man's got a little bit of corner. A flag is thrown. The play is run down and tackled by Lawler. But another flag. Boy, there was some real good movement on Pete Lawler's standpoint that time, Ken. He, he came in there, and, and the running back was coming at him. And, and he set up. Running back took a move to the outside further around, around and picked up a, a blocker with it. But Pete moved laterally on that very, very well and actually ended up making yeah, the tackle again. Very interesting uh, movement from Pete's standpoint. The referees uh, still haven't given any signal to figure out what this infraction is. Well, it came from behind, so you'd more or less think that that was going to be, again, another offensive uh, problem. <coughs> well, they're talking to Chris Dorez to, for the options, so uh, yeah. that will push Notre Dame back. I noticed that Notre Dame's offense, uh, they have three men lined up all in an eye behind the quarterback. So it's almost like the old T formation, only they're not in a T. Yeah, really. They have a lot of blockers back they there do. for a running game. Well, and then number 32 is uh, Jovan Rhodes, a big boy, six feet, and he goes 175 pounds. One of their outstanding running backs, got a lot of size, got some movement out there. So apparently he needs something, though, to open up a little bit of a space for him, and that's what they have that... That's set for another uh, five yard penalty quarterback rolling looking to throw across the middle and it's almost intercepted and another flag. The coverage there was by uh, you to check. <laughs> and we can't seem to get first down played here. Uh, no, we frankly, certainly can't. We've had uh, two penalties so far and uh, looks like a third one coming up. Yeah, and right. Chris Dorez is getting getting the options explained again. And Steve Philippone is pointing backwards, so saying, take it. Yeah, well, moving in the wrong direction from Notre Dame's standpoint. And you know, that was a receiver downfield for Notre Dame. Boy, oh boy. Well, that was an interesting play that they had set out there with everything going right and the, and the quarterback rolling to the left for a pass. He was all open out there, but everybody in hand's defense had also moved to, the, to their left side. So we got 25 yards to go for a first down. First down and 25 from the 20 yard line. And it's still first down. This game may go till evening at the rate we're presently playing it. Well, Chris is going to have to uh, make sure they make those decisions a little quicker. He's going to make that wedding in Far River. <laughs> and, the, and the second um, timeout uh, of the half called by Notre Dame. We're ready to try first down again for about the third or fourth time, and it's uh, first and 25 for Notre Dame, back at the 20-yard line, looking to throw. And it's gonna be thrown long across the middle. That could be picked off, and it is. Matt Gentile, interception. Yeah, How about that, huh? Gentile what a beautiful uh, up in the out. air and uh, catch it from uh, Matt's standpoint. The ball was well overthrown of the receiver, and Matt Gentile, uh, playing safety, was right there to get it. A little bit of fairness to both the quarterback for Notre Dame and, uh, and the receiver. The receiver slipped on his way out, and uh, so they lost a couple steps that way, which would have made a difference in the way Matt set up on the ball. Ball to 46. Daniel Hand gets it back after the interception by Gentile. Uh, referees aren't quite ready with the sticks yet. They had to come a long ways back with those. up over there across the field. Live music, if you will. Uh, have you noticed, uh, Frank, that there are quite a few more people from Madison here than there are from Fairfield? Yeah, you know, through the years, I've always seemed to notice that, too. And, uh, Just to the left to Hamill. He cuts it back at a good gain and still going. He gained about 13 yards, it looks like. First down for Hans. I like the way he took on that uh, safety back there, too. He knew he wasn't going to be able to go around him, but uh, by taking him on the shoulder, he was able to get himself again another yard and a half, two yards. So a pitch left, a quick uh, pitch to the left, and gives Hamill time to look for uh, holes and makes a good cutback. Pitch left this time to Hamill again, and he's taking the left sideline. A flag comes in. 
Yeah, it's going to be a hold, I would say, on hand yeah, standpoint. Kevin McCary, that may be uh, by Mike Coco and Devon Rose. A blocking penalty, play. holding against hand. That'll take hand way back. Yeah, I'm going to certainly wipe out those. Holding against hand. Bring it back around the uh, 45. Okay. 42. <laughs> Well, that's too bad, but uh, they were trying to make the sweep, and the sweep wasn't quite going there uh, real well. So the hand trying to turn him inside must have grabbed a little jersey out there. A repeat of uh, first down, but now first and uh, about 18, looks like. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a little confusion on the sticks. You the bet, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's first in a bunch anyway, so we're even hands getting a chance at a couple of first downs here. Get on track. Scott Evans, the quarterback. And Evansy looking to throw to the right side, and there's his man. Complete pass to Sean Lynch. Yeah, Sean Lynch got about eight, nine yards on that. Take it about to where the sticks should be. pass is complete to Sean Lynch. Stopped by Troy Maxwell. So that will now bring up uh, second down and about 12. Good concentration on Sean's standpoint. Uh, he could definitely hear footsteps behind him, but he concentrated and uh, pulled it in quickly when he got it and hold himself down. So uh, nice move on Sean's standpoint. Tevisy ah! rolling left, and, and, and uh, he's got a man after him, and flags come in. We've got a lot of flags in this game. Yeah, going to be some illegal block again. That's an illegal block on the hand. So, uh, this game is getting a little bit sloppy, and it's catching. Yeah, there must be a virus or something that goes out there. But uh, now you can see that again. The uh, hand, hand blocker was kind of losing his position on the defender, and he came in from the behind him, and... Uh, uh, it's going to draw the flags all the time, particularly when you're sitting in the hip pocket of the referee <laughs> when you're doing that. Oh, now we've got uh, backward. Uh, We're close to 30 yards to go for a first down. Repeat a second down. Ball at the 49. Some famous general used to say, I never retreat. I, I attack backwards or something like that. Well, Ken's attacking backwards right now. Obviously looking to throw. And across the middle, and there's Gentile. Gentile's got a long gain and a first down to the 20. You bet. Oh, he broke open very well. Hevesy saw him coming from behind the, the uh, safety back there. Got his pass. It's the he was able to just put it right on the numbers. He needed about 30 yards, and he yards, uh, was enough for a hand first down. The PA announcer says 26, but he got the first down by about a yard. So sure uh, they made up for the penalty real quickly. Uh, really First and ten from the 21 Scott yard line. Scott caught Matt right on stride. Ball well, at the 21-yard line, so Gentile is the receiver. Hand off this time to Mike Burrell, swinging left, and he gains a yard. Okay, that's a good way again. Put, put the, the run in after a big, big pass. Defender. Make the linebacker stay home again. Good balanced attack showing today on hand standpoint, I think, Ken. <clears throat> Second and nine from the 19. Ball's placed at about the 19. Oh, interesting. Hamill coming over to get in the slot. Hamill in the slot. Sean Lynch, wide right. Hand off to Doraz right up the middle. And Doraz breaks the tackle, breaks another one, and goes forward almost to the five-yard line. Let me tell you, the defender's getting up very slowly, too. Yeah, you're good, there. Chris also, uh, he never shies away from uh, taking a guy on head up. And... Uh, and he got through there, was getting extra yardage anyway, kept his eyes focused out there first and, uh, the first and, 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 and drove himself right through the block for, again, another couple of yards. Good second effort again. On Excellent Christmas. run by Chris Doraz for a first down and goal at about the seven. And a little confusion in Hans' backfield. Finally, Hamill goes to the tailback slot. And hand off to Doraz right up the middle, and Doraz heads for the end zone. Touchdown, Hans. 
Ras Doris took it right behind the Hennessy and the Pirates John and uh, Dezima. Notre Dame, nothing. Well, that was good, good mix in place, too, <laughs> out there. Kept everybody off guard from the defense standpoint. We saw Hamill start to move out to the right to the left, as he is uh, prone to do, and uh, left the open uh, uncovered. Good, good play by Chris. Score is now 13 to nothing with 7-11 left in the second quarter. Conversion try by Sean Lynch coming up. Snap back and a kick up. Kick is good. Excellent Sean kick. Sean Lynch's extra point is good. Into the net by Sean. The score of the hand. Nice, he had 14. plenty of distance on that Never kick. Go. Nothing. He about put that one over the net, Frank. <laughs> very, very close. Yeah. Hand, hand, 14 to nothing. Hand hasn't had a chip. Hand hasn't had a chance this year to, to try a, or the situation to try a field goal, but I know uh, from talking to Sean, he's a little bit uh, anxious to maybe try one or two field goals from back there. He's been doing a lot of practice through the offseason and everything, keeping his leg in shape, and uh, he's got some pretty good distance showing, I think. So Daniel Hand's uh, second score, 14 to nothing. The key play of that drive was that uh, almost 30-yard uh, play, pass play from Scott Hevesy to Matt Gentile. Certainly was. Kick off by Lynch, a high one floating down to about the uh, 16. And there's a tackle made by Peter Lawler, who holds the corner very well. Boy, he played, he played off the block of, uh, of this Troy Maxwell, one of the co-captains. He played off that block of Notre Dame. He stayed keep his eye right on that belt buckle of the, uh, of the ball carrier. Now we're using Pete's name a lot today. Good going, Pete. Ball is at 24. In the defensive backfield for hand are Matt Gentile, Ryan Dorez, Peter Lawler, and up this time right up the middle on a pretty good game. Oh, my Tackle goodness. there by uh, uh, Chris Dorez and Andy Drennan and uh, Matt Gentile and Matt in late. Terry stopped by Matt Gentile. Matt Anderson and uh, got excited. He thought he was going to get into that backfield again that time. He drove right through it hard and. Uh, just missed catching that ball carrier. That's the best run of the game so far for Notre Dame. About a six yard gain. Second and four. And off the first man this time, he goes to the right side. Uh, first down for uh, Notre Dame. And tackled by uh, Rob Dezima. But a first down. Is that the first first down in this game? The first one? Well, no, it's not. We had about four penalties. Each one of them. Okay. First down. First one running. The <laughs> first one said it still would. Sorry about that. Bad joke, I guess. <laughs> Ball to 35. And we're down to six minutes left before halftime with hand leading 14 to nothing. Notre Dame continues to run. Run this time uh, stacked up by Udicek. Tackle low by Andy Drennan. Chris Doraz in on the tackle. Everybody stayed at home very well that time. Uh, I was thinking they might have been going to try to pass on the first down that time, but everybody stayed home. I don't believe Notre Dame is much of a passing team. Uh, They've had one interception, and they've had another one that could have been intercepted. Very much so. Oh, Pre-game talk with the coach, uh, Philippone. He said they do have a good receiver or two, and, uh, and the quarterback has an arm. So uh, they haven't shown us anything yet. Second and about seven. And handoff again to the right side, and uh, finally put down by Ryan Doraz. Rob Dezima in on the tackle. Javon Rose on the carry stop by Rob Dezima and Pete Waller. Well, okay, this third down and two or three this time. I, I suspect he'll do the same thing, giving them the 32 to try to barrel it up there. And that's what they've been successful with so far in this stint. The ball is placed at the 43. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, they're in the gap. Two receivers to the left for Notre Dame, and they hand off, uh, and it stopped. <laughs> Not much there. Wow. 
Andy nice. Drennan and uh, 76 for a hand. Mike Anderson in on the tackle. You bet. Andy came through there so fast. He didn't quite expect to uh, meet Pat on through yeah, that time. He didn't have a chance to wrap, but he sure slowed Anderson. him down. So that ball, that play was stuck, which will bring up a fourth down. Fourth and about one. Yeah, let's welcome Pete Clark to the uh, play in there. He's over here right now. I think this is the first series we've seen him. Peter Clark, uh, it's his first action all year, coming back from an elbow injury, and he will not play much today, but he is playing. He has a pad on his uh, right elbow. Punt formation for Notre Dame. And Clark is almost in on the punt. It's bounced and picked up on a run by Gentile, who brings it across the 30, back to across the 35. Nice bounce. Uh, and Matt had it right in stride when he was looking at it. Took, it, took the time to look it over real well. Picked the bounce up and knew he could kind of speed by the first And Gentile tackle. is down after that tackle, uh, oh, Frank. Sure. I hope he's not hurt. Well, we certainly we hope he's not. We have a break in the action here as the coaches attend to Matt Gentile, who returned to punt. Matt Gentile did get up and walk off after that play, and there was a personal foul on the play against Notre Dame. Gives hand uh, first down across the 50, and Burrell makes a long run and another flag. The flag is thrown near the line of scrimmage, holding Mike against hand. Stopped by Javon Rose, which is a flag on the play. So that good run by Mike Burrell will come back. Yeah, that's too bad. Okay, well, let's see what he can do now. Give him a chance for another first time. <laughs> They're going to wear, wear out that side of the uh, you know, downstairs. Holding against hand. Well, if there are ever expendable penalties, I think this might be one of those games where you have some expendable penalties. First down repeated, first and 20 for Ham. Lawler in motion, right? And Hevesy rolling right, looking to throw. Now he's looking across the middle, complete pass. Nice. And another flag after the play is over. Complete pass to yeah, Sean a, Lynch. That's going to be a personal yeah, foul, to too. To Sean uh, Lynch. Personal foul against Ham. Yeah, Ham's two flag backs flag. came across and really turtled the, uh, the defender over here, the... Uh, Actually, the defensive end for uh, Notre Dame really turtled them. And they started to, was, there was a pile up with the two blockers, and they, they started to really have some fisticuffs, I think, down there. So we'll take a brief uh, break in the action here while they sort this out. Fine. So a personal foul against um, Hand pushes him way back. Second down now, and uh, too much to count. <laughs> yeah, well, we had 25 so. or something like that. Two 15s plus the 10, so we're someplace out there around 40 yards. 25, well, we had some progress. So. Hevesy uh, rolling up, looking to throw, and his man falls down. That's Lawler on the far sideline. Uh, Feet went out from under him before he could uh, get the pass. Yeah, the pass was actually, you could already tell the pass was going to be a little bit behind him, so he tried to put the brakes on and uh, uh, came in for a safe, safe at first base, but unfortunately we're playing football today. 25 from the 37-yard line. Okay, now we're going to have third down here, Ken. Third down and uh, about, oh, cool. about <laughs> half the distance to go. calculator when you can come up with it. <laughs> One setback behind uh, Hevesy is uh, Doris. Gentile motion this side and uh, sack. Sacked in the backfield. Uh, Scott Hevesy had no chance on that play. Scott Hevesy is for loss by Tom Conlon. This kid Conlon is the one that got turtled badly in the uh, play with a personal foul in it. So fourth and a half a mile here. Hand will punt it. Yeah, I think this calls for a punt. <laughs> And we're right down to two minutes left before halftime. Uh, well, I don't think he can punt it as far as the first down marker. It's a good snap and a low kick. Nice. Going to get no. Nope. Well, it didn't, I it was it didn't bounce it. real well, but it's going to go down to about the 41. No, it didn't make it to the first down marker. How do you like that? <laughs> like I say, sometimes you have uh, the ability to have some expendable penalties, and with a 14 to nothing lead, 
<laughs> and being able to get some pretty good uh, forward progress all the time, I think this may be one of those games. Well, if Notre Dame should uh, march it down in this last uh, minute 40 before halftime and score, we're, they're right back in the ball game. You though. bet. That makes it a different different ball game altogether. They go into the halftime uh, like that. So let's see what they do in this possession. I'm gonna. They, they probably will have a little more intensity. I think they're spreading some people out here, Kent. But I I predict 32. We'll get the ball. Notre Dame pitch to left, and it's fumbled in the backfield and covered. That'll be a long loss for Notre Dame. That's going to be an eight or nine yard loss. Well, I predicted that 32 get the ball, but he didn't quite get the ball. <laughs> he was intended to get the yeah. ball. But, uh, good follow up on Hans uh, part that time. I don't think anybody was quite close enough to maybe recover that fumble on the pitch out. But Now we got a minute left in the first half. If Hans should stop this play, Frank, they might start using timeouts to the stop the clock. Certainly could. I mean, and down where they are, they could get some field position in their side or another mistake of some sort. Uh, Notre Dame standpoint. Uh, Notre Dame is uh, going to pitch to the same near play, side. The same two. play, and uh, defensive men are out here. Although, a pretty good gain by uh, Notre Dame. Gains back about eight or nine yards. Well, good second effort on uh, Roach. Timeout, Notre Dame. Dame. And Notre Dame takes a timeout with 31 seconds left before halftime. Well, they got a third down with only about two to go, so. Uh, no, they got more than that, Frank. They, got, uh, they had the long penalty, so oh, it's that's 13. Right. That's or, right. Or 12. About 12 for uh, Notre Dame at the 39-yard line. And we're down to about a half a minute left before halftime. Notre Dame looking to throw across the middle. And it's incomplete pass, overthrown, bringing up fourth down with... Oh, we got a flight down in the field. Number 6A ought to be thrown out of this game, let me tell you that. There's, uh, that was Peter Clark yeah, in the bottom there. Incomplete. No way that should have happened. It was just fast protection. Him in, came up and hit him, tried to slide off him with a with a swim move. Uh, turned him on his back, turned, turned the Notre Dame kid on his back. And Notre Dame came up swinging. Fourth down and 12 for Notre Dame. That's not the way you keep your head, though, I'll tell you. This is fourth and 12 here. Uh, Frank in there. They're uh, lined up to run it. Yep, they are. He's got almost had him on his side. And it's going to be a long uh, got wobbler. Got a back up there in the air. Incomplete ball. The coverage by Ryan Dorez. And that was a fourth down play, Frank. I don't understand that one. 13 seconds left on the clock. Hand uh, gets the ball. There is a flag down. The flag lying on the 35. I, I would project that that's going to be a holding or something back there, and Notre Dame and Nand will, will decline the penalty and get uh, ball position on the 40-yard line of Notre Dame. Well, that's 13 seconds left. Very wounded duck pass on that one. He marched that off against hand. No, I guess so. Maybe they marched it off against hand with a Nothing to pass the penalty. Gets oh, hand at the okay. automatic post down to Notre Dame. Well, I don't know. I, I said earlier that a lot of times it's a very physical game with Notre Dame. I'm afraid it's starting to turn into that, too. Okay. On that fourth down play, which had no chance of being uh, completed, there was a penalty against Hand for roughing the passer. So with 13 seconds left in the half, uh, Notre Dame has a first down at about the 45. And they're looking to throw. And uh, tackled in a sack in the backfield. That's uh, Mike Anderson. Mike Anderson. Let me tell you, Pete Clark was also in there. That will run out the first half because Notre Dame is out of timeouts. The last play of the first half, a very sloppy uh, game from a standpoint of penalties. Oh, you bet. But uh, Hand is leading Notre Dame of Fairfield 14 to nothing at halftime. 14 to nothing. Hand has had a pretty much uh, offensive goal when they wanted to out there. Over, but like you say, most of the time we've had has been spent in penalties. Really, really awful lot of penalties so far. And also, I think Head's getting out. Uh, I think this halftime's coming just about right to maybe cool down the heads a little bit. Uh, there were some people that were uh, getting a little overheated there that were uh, getting penalties when they shouldn't have. We will have some of the halftime activities with the Daniel Hand High School Band at, uh, at the half. Led by Richard Fasano, Dave Baker, and Mike Hentz are the drum majors. 
And the second and half will begin right after the uh, band. is about to get underway. Daniel Hand will kick off back to Notre Dame of Fairfield. Sean Lynch uh, has the ball at the 40-yard line. Three receivers back deep for Notre Dame, and it's a long high kick on the uh, right sideline. It's fumbled and dropped out of bounds about 10-yard line. How about that, huh? Jeez. A little, little butterfingers out there. A little bit cold today, although the kids are wearing gloves, so... Maybe that's why he dropped it, Frank. Maybe it is. Yeah, you know, you have to get used to those things. And if they're a little too big for you or Sean something, kick off with don't work right. To the 10-yard line, where he first and 10. Real nice kick, though, by Sean again. He drove it right back there at the 10-yard line, where it 
where it landed, so uh, also into the corner. This is kind of an interesting game so far. It's uh, been pretty sloppy, a lot of penalties uh, and uh, uh, personal fouls and that sort of thing, so they need to clean it up a little bit to start this second half. Yeah, it's very concerning to me to see how rough that was getting in, uh, at the end of the first half there because uh, you start to get the heads going in the wrong direction and people can get hurt. You don't want to see that. Officials time out on the field, looks like. That Gentile's back in the game. The injury to him was uh, merely the wind knocked out of him, apparently. Yeah, at halftime, we were able to talk to some people, and they said that late hit, there was a personal foul, uh, did just knock the wind out of him, which we were concerned for. Run up the middle this time. Uh, Notre Dame makes about five yards. Tackle by 76, Mike Anderson. Mike Anderson's putting in quite Turned a game today. Carry stop by Mike Anderson. Yeah, Mike's really doing a nice job out there, maturing well this season, as are so many of those sophomores. Second and five and 15. Anderson and Mike Salmani are the two down men in the middle of the line. Greg DeConcilius and Chris Holt are uh, outside of them on the line. Show and pass. Quarterback That's, keep nope. this time right up the middle, and a pretty good gain. Looks like a first down across the 20. Yeah, should be. Okay, well, they, they really looked to me like they were going to try a pass, but... Uh, Quarterback keeper on that. Quarterback saw the opening and took it. That may not have been a cold down play. Down may not have been. Notre Dame first down. So Notre Dame with a first down at the 20. Notre Dame's 32, the, the big go-to guy. Uh, no, it wasn't 32, I'm sorry. Another player coming in, limping pretty hard. Anchor, that's the shoe's not on, right? Don't know which. The inside linebackers for hand are Chris Dorez and Andy Drennan. The rover positions or the corners are manned by Mike Uticek and Rob Dezima. That's a delay this time right up the middle and oh, man, yes. it stopped for a loss. And yes. in on that play is Mike Anderson. Mike Anderson in on taking the tack, taking him down, but also you had Mike Salmani in there, also doing a neat job. Boy, I'll tell you, you two, two front end guys like that, both sophomores come in and uh, able to uh, make some movement backwards on the offensive line. Uh, that speaks and no goes very well for what you're trying to do out there on the program. Second down, a little over 10 coming up. In the uh, deep positions for the defense for hand or in the middle is uh, Matt Gentile and Ryan Dorez and Pete Lawler on the corner. And this time uh, it's a run to the left, gain of about five yards. Yeah, five yards on that. That's right. And uh, Udichick went out, had to take the uh, pitch out, man. Uh, and it was able to force the, force the runner back inside. Anderson and Lawler in on the tackle. Okay, third third down and uh, about five, six yards there, Kent. Third and about five. The ball at the 25. It's a quick slant in, a complete pass, and a first down, a good game for Notre Dame across the 40. John Wilson's pass is complete. Well, let me tell you, that's probably about the only pass that I think would have worked Dame right then. Down. Tackled by uh, Udicek. Yeah, the the uh, Notre Dame player was Evan Bernard on that. 6'1", 190 pound senior. Good size on him coming in across that play. So uh, Notre Dame uh, has a bit of a drive uh, started here. Yeah, we got, uh, got Pete Clark back in on this uh, defensive end slot over here. Uh, he's covering our guard right now. He's outside. He's outside 74. Notre Dame hands off in the backfield, oh, and not, back. not much there. Gain of a yard or so. And Chris Holt is uh, in low on the tackle. Gain about two. Troy Maxwell on the carry. They took that right at Mike Salmani. Stop by there. Mike Salmani. And he held his ground, as you can hear from the uh, background speaker, maybe he made the tackle. Held tough. About a two yard gain. Second and eight. And quarterback keep this time. Quarterback goes through and good yardage near a first down. Looks yeah, too short. Depends. I think it is short, just slightly. But uh, well, that's uh, and these, the this overall series. Chris that's two uh, quarterback keepers on this sort of thing. Not something you see very often, but seems to be working right now. That quickness apparently is something they 
they feel they can take advantage. Third and one at the 49 yard line. It's a gain just across midfield and third and less than one to go. Well, it looks like they're trying to do with that quarterback keeper. They, they take their guard and, and uh, kick out our, uh, our down tackles in there, if you will. And it leaves a pretty good hoping for the, between the uh, center and the guard for the quarterback to sneak through. The quarterback hands off to the first man, oh. and he doesn't get much. Boy, but he was... didn't need very much. No, he sure didn't. But, boy, that was a good coverage again. Mike uh, Anderson coming across there. Oh, no! And Chris Holt is in on it. Lateral move. Right, Mike's going to try to stop Mike Anderson. I'll and tell you, I measure think this time out for Michigan. No, they got to measure it, but I think it's still, no, yeah. it's close. It's going to be the nose or better, you know? <laughs> We're looking right down the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we can't figure uh, it out from here. That's right. It's it's. Uh, this is the reason you have those things come out. Okay. What's it going to look like? Drag it forward. Stretch it. It's going to be a little short. Nice short. Yes, sir. About a foot short. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fourth down. Fourth and in inches. Fourth and in inches from the uh, 49 of hand. This is where you uh, shoot the linebackers. <laughs> this is it. And this has got to be the farthest penetration so far for Notre Dame in the game. So, yes, they have some momentum going. Uh, I'd say a quarterback keeper probably, again, maybe a sneak. Right in the gap. Here's the biggest play coming up of this game so far. That's what I say they're going to do is they're going to try to go right off the uh, right side of the quarterback yep. keep. He's got it. Quarterback has got, got it. it. He's got it. Oh, he's got it. It was uh, stacked up it. pretty well, but uh, John Wilson on the got a little bit of a Notre Dame first down. Yeah, you could kind of really kind of anticipate that from up here anyway. I know it's not as easy when you're down on the field. But uh, the way they've already been doing some quarterback keeping and being successful with it, you could anticipate that, can I think. Holt and Dora is in on that tackle. Yeah, but all they needed was that foot, foot and a half, and it's about what they got, maybe a yard max. So, yes, Notre Dame's built a little momentum so far. First down for Notre Dame there across midfield. We're in the third quarter. 6.50 left third quarter. Yeah, he can say it's back in his tight left, end. And a run this direction and submarine by Andy Drennan. Drennan cut the legs off under the bat and the ball carrier. Carry took it by Andy Drennan. Sure did. Came up on him nice and strong, but they still got about four or five yards on that. About a four yard gain across the 45. Okay. Second and seven. Well, it makes it a little bit interesting right now, the way the uh, Notre Dame's able to kind of plod along. And we haven't had any penalties for several plays now, yeah. Frank. Yeah, refreshing. Tight formation for Notre Dame. Handed off to the tailback and tackled Beautiful. in the backfield. Excellent penetration by Chris Holt. Chris Holt, so nice. Slice through on that. Stop by Chris Holt. Shot the gap and got him coming along the, the back side there. Uh, maybe they got a yard as he fell forward. Uh, not much there. Less than a yard gain. Third and five. Okay, let's see. Well, we got Deconcilius back in on this tight end. I mean, defensive end slot over here. Almost six yards to go for Notre Dame. Third down. And he's okay. looking to throw. Rolling, Rolling out. To the left. Okay. And he's got a little bit of corner. Ryan Dora. Uterchek no, Uterchek. Him around. There you go. Uterchek followed up by Ryan Dora. Yep. It's short of a first down. Fourth down. John Wilson on the Good carry. Good movement. Stop by Ryan Dora. Good movement by hand standpoint. Ball three. Okay. Oh, almost to the 40, and he needs uh, almost three yards yes, for first sir. down. Well, I don't suspect Fourth that down. they're going to kick it. I really don't. Not here. Not trailing 14, nothing. <laughs> Fourth well, and three. Sure. Okay, Pete Clark comes in, and uh, Deacon Silius goes out. See if he tightens that defense up, see what they're going to do. They're going to go three on the front line, it looks like, and have five. So it's Nick. Big fourth down. Mike Utechek comes up to the line. Tight formation. And yep. quarterback rolling to the right, looking to throw, throwing to the right side. And it's caught a complete pass. Yep. First down for Notre Dame inside the 30. Wow, that was one excellent pass and an excellent catch on that. That was the best pass he's thrown. Caught, caught hand a little flat-footed, I think, as far as the overall defense on mechanism on that. Uh, they took the fake on the line line plunge on that and uh, didn't catch up very well that the quarterback still had the ball. 
So first down at the 27, Notre Dame has uh, mounted a uh, drive down the field. Started deep in their own territory. Okay. Well, certainly have pulled up some momentum right now. We've had the ball for a good uh, seven minutes of this half so far. Handed off in the backfield and then swinging to the left side and tackled by Yudichuk and Lawler. Troy Maxwell on the carry. there. But they were really forced into that by uh, Anderson again. Anderson really caused them to uh, have to go a little bit deeper, stay a little bit deeper in the backfield without getting out there, and it gave gave you to check a chance to come in and cut off that, and seal it off, if you will. That play was a little bit slow developing, so the slow. defense had a chance to come up and meet it. And I think part of the slow development was the fact that, that uh, Anderson came in there a bit. Second and 10 at the 27. They're giving us cover three. Okay, going wide. Looks like they're going wide. Two receivers wide. split wide to the right for Notre Dame. And quarterback keep right at the middle. Gains only a yard or two. About two. That, that's going to get old fast, I think. They're giving us that. Okay, third down and uh, six out there. Brown Wilson on the carry. Quarterback can only do too many of those sneaks like that <laughs> before he's worn out. Mike Anderson to stop it, brings up a third. It's hard to move That's a seven. whole pile of, pile of troops, you know. Okay. Third down and about uh, six. Ball is at about the 24. Deconcilius and Holt at the end of the line. Left. Okay. Okay, we're looking fast, looking fast. Cross the, middle. cross the middle. And a man is there. A ball is knocked down. Yes, Peter sir. Lawler. Almost caught, almost intercepted. Almost. He almost Brown had Wilson that wrestle away, away, and uh, Matt Chetown came in and, and broke it up Matt totally. Was, but that was close. Uh, almost had, a, had it in there for a touchdown, but like you say, Law, they came in there and broke it up real, real well. Another fourth down play coming up. Fourth and uh, four. Yeah, about six. About six. Yeah, matter of fact. How about that? Okay, well, here it is. Three minutes, 34 left in this third period. And they've... Uh, so Notre control. Dame has kept the ball most of the third period, but they haven't scored yet. Uh, and they won't if they can get stopped on this play. Looking to throw to the right side. Now the quarterback is running. And the incomplete pass. Dumps it in, and it uh, bounces. Looking for a short dump, and he had plenty of time, and he had the man open. Just Robert couldn't execute the play. The play. Daniel Daniel Mann, the the holes bounds, Notre Dame the takes over the ball at about the 24. And was showing a couple more players in that time. Mark Kinkowski was out there. I saw that, and uh, looked like Chad Davis was out on the field too, which is kind of neat. See some uh, some movement and uh, getting some fresh fresh players out there to get some game time. So Notre, uh, Notre Dame gives the ball back to hand at the uh, 24. Pitch this time to the left. Dorez. And Dorez gains only about a yard. That's all you got to do. Tell me. Didn't, didn't quite have enough to get around the corner on that one. Almost, but not quite enough to get around the corner. That wing tight end pop the ball. We got to come to the middle. Matt Gentile brings in a play for Scott Hevesy. Okay. Second and nine. This time we have receivers split to the right. Uh, Sean Lynch wide. Eric Hamill on the slot. Hevesy looking for Lynch. He's got a complete pass. Out of bounds. That should be enough for a first down. Certainly should. Very nice. Same play. Cross the 45. To Sean Lynch is complete. Nice, nice pass and a nice down. pickup on Sean's standpoint. Sean was split wide to the left and uh, or to the right, and uh, Eric Hamill was in the slot inside him. Yeah, I like that play because with Hamill there in the slot, it makes the linebackers have to do a little double take and who they're going to cover. It sets some confusion up. First down at the 36. Same play. Say, side. To the left. He's got a man wide open over there, and Hamill catches it. And uh, ball is knocked loose and covered by hand. Yeah, I believe they're going to rule out a complete pass and a fumble. That's what I would say they're going to lead it. And, Hamill did get the ball, and, and he was just starting to put it away and, and got hit and popped the ball right out of there. Tough situation to be in. But now it's second down with hand uh, and about 14 yards to go. Loss of about four on that. Chris Dorez did cover the ball for hand. 
We're down to two minutes left in the third quarter. Hand is continuing to lead 14 to nothing. Hevesy looking across the middle, and there's his man, uh, Gentile, complete pass down the middle, and Gentile is swinging to the right, got blocking, and Gentile is heading for the end zone, and he's not going to quite make it down to about the six. Excellent, Hevesy, nice Matt catch. Gentile, who picks up blocking by Sean Lynch and takes it uh, near the five-yard line. Well, let me tell you something on that. That was a real good look by Hevesy all the way. He was looking right, looking right, looking right. Saw that uh, Matt was getting out behind. He led him out there very, very well. Just enough touch on that thing. And uh, uh, Matt's favoring that shoulder a little bit because he came down on the tackle. He kind of popped down on that shoulder of his. First down at about the six. Goal to go for Daniel Hand with a long pass play from Scott Hevesy to Matt Gentile. One quarterback to the other. And off this time, Dudora is up the middle, oh, touchdown. How about that? Untouched into the end zone. Untouched is right. In for a hand touchdown. He could have worn his tuxedo for this afternoon this on that play, I think. 20, uh, Kent. Notre Dame, nothing. So a quick score by hand uh, with a run right behind uh, Tim Hevesy. And the guards in there, Rob DeZima and Andy Drennan, and they opened up a good hole for oh, That was Christora. a magnificent hole. That would be good to see on... Uh, Instant replay uh, sometime Monday night when everybody else is watching this game. <laughs> Lynn Richards will have it for us. <laughs> the conversion try by Sean Lynch. Placement kick. Kick is up and it's off to the right. Oh, no right. good. Yeah, a little so the score wide. stays at 20 to nothing. Daniel Hand leading Notre Dame of Fairfield. 122 Sean left third quarter. 20, Notre Dame nothing. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, Hand didn't have the ball very much during this period. Uh, they took it with about three and a quarter left in the period, and there's 122 showing. So in a two-minute time frame, uh, Hand was able to get the ball downfield and into the end zone, Ken. Notre Dame, on the other hand, had the uh, ball for uh, nine minutes. Well, no. Uh, was it three? Yeah, nine minutes worth of the ball game and uh, was not able to convert anything. Sean Lynch will kick it back to Notre Dame. Exercising that foot again. He's been kicking it uh, uh, he's on the left hash mark. And he's been kicking it near the left sideline. Okay, trying to get a little curve on that thing to kind of put him in a corner down there. The 32 is their go, Jason Rose. Yeah, another one over is on their go to guy as far as the, normal the 10 yard offense. line and return up the middle. And a re good return. And Sean Lynch is the only man there to stop him. And Lynch makes that tackle at the 38 yard line. Otherwise, oh, Notre Dame had a touchdown. You bet. I mean, what a nice open field uh, tackle by Sean. Staying there. Uh, <laughs> keeping his eye, keeping it, keeping it waiting, letting, it, letting the offensive player take the move. And he did. And then he was able to bring him down. The ball is at about the 38, and that ball was fielded on the fly at the 10. So a good return by Take Notre Dame. Yes, it was. That was that Jason Rhodes. Uh, J Javin Rhodes is the way they spell that. He had some blockers ahead of him. If he'd waited for his Matter blockers, fact, uh, out, Sean Lynch right. wouldn't have had a chance. That's right. He, out, he outran his blockers. You're right, Ken. He must have had at least three guys there. Swing to the left this time, and the uh, man gets a little yardage tackled by Peter Lawler. 77 uh, is in there, and that's uh, Chad Davis. Yep. Getting his jersey dirty, which is always fun. <laughs> Very cold here. There's wind, and the... Uh, Probably about 45 degrees and overcast, Kent. Uh, ah, football weather. Football weather, yeah, I love it. Mike Anderson and Chad Davis are the two men in the middle of the line. Uh, on either side of them are Chris Hold and Greg DeConcilius. And a flag is thrown. We're about to run out the third quarter, but it still shows five seconds. I've got to be offensive set on that. Frank, while we have a brief uh, break here after the five-yard penalty against Notre Dame, uh, you mentioned something about hand soccer teams doing well. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those neat things. There's a lot of kids in the soccer program as well for Daniel Hand Athletics, and both the, the men's soccer and the women's soccer programs are undefeated on the year and highly ranked in the state. The men's team is, uh, is uh, second ranked in the state in the division, and the women's team is uh, fourth ranked in the state, which we want to congratulate all those uh, young men and women that are active in that program. And they both won last night, right? Both won last night at home under the lights uh, at Strong Field, and they were playing West Haven, which is a division up, I believe. So, uh, uh, matter of fact, I think the girls' team was... Um, 
uh, was a shutout, and the boys' team was a shutout, I think. So uh, we have uh, sports doing well in several directions of well, that. Yeah, I think earlier in the season, I just did like an uh, extracurricular activity count when the, for the high school with about, I think it's 812 or 820 kids in the high school this year, and it's got to be close to 400 of them active in that extracurricular activities. Whether, as we hear them right now, there's about 100 kids over there in the band giving up their Saturday mornings as well. And, uh, and the band is another group that is very, very unsung as far as what's going on. Uh, they go to parades on Sundays and Saturdays uh, when they're not at the football games and put a pep band out and all kinds of things. A lot of fun to see the kids. It's a good part of the high school education. So we're ready to begin the uh, fourth quarter. A uh, good return on the kick by Notre Dame. Puts them in good field position. They're uh, just across the 40-yard line. Second down. Quarterback uh, hands off going to the left, and uh, legs are cut off from under the man by Chris Doraz coming up to meet it. Yep, tripped him up. That isn't Doraz, that's uh, Uticek, Mike Uticek, 35. Yep. Yep. Devon Rhodes on the carry, stopped by Greg DeConcillis. Third and 11. So I brings up third and about 11. Okay. Well, hold on here. Something I kind of like seeing as we're a little bit of slow here. You see that Matt Gentile is, is out there in the safety position. He swapped off with uh, Scott Hevesy, as everybody knows, because of that injured shoulder of Matt. Scott's over in the sidelines, able to take advantage of the timeout to be, you know, off the field where he used to be safety and, and do some talking with uh, the coaches and see what they're up against in the whole business. And a pass by Notre Dame is incomplete down the middle, uh, yeah, a little bit short of his man. Uh, coverage by Ryan Doraz and, and uh, Matt Gentile brings up fourth down and 11 for Notre Dame. But they're deep enough, I'm sure they'll go for it. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they have any choice but that. And it actually is in, uh, is in a pass situation by far, although um, they, they might give it to 32 again, try to get him to turn his speed on. Fourth down, <laughs> about 11, and the ball is spotted at the 38. And flank left and right. High formation, receivers each side of the field. And the quarterback now throws it high and right away through. Throws it considerably over the receiver. That was a fourth down yeah, play. Hand gets the ball complete. back with Hand 11 minutes right left now. in the ball game. Okay, well, let's see what Hand's able to do this time. Uh, bringing the troops First back on the field. Scott, well rested now, comes on the field, takes his position in front of the troops in the huddle. With a three touchdown lead into the fourth quarter, Frank, I'm expecting to see uh, a lot of running at this point. Yeah, it certainly seems like that's what it'll do. Keep good control of football. One back out there, and it's and Mr. Doraz. Chris Doraz uh, is submarine and stopped at the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard loss. Yeah, I'd say about that. Just about a lot yard loss out there. But the clock does start to Chris keep on going with 10.40 left in the Jamie game. Rivera and Manny Dominguez. We may start to see some more fresh jerseys coming in and out of there, although pretty much everybody gets a good chance to play anyway, as it is. That's right. There have been so many injuries mm. and a fairly thin squad to begin with. And a flag goes up just as uh, Scott Hevesy takes the snap. Yeah. Delay of game, it looks like. That will cost hand five, and they'll replay the down. Okay. Well, it's going to make it second, 15, 16, probably there. Scott let just a little bit too much of the clock run that time. <laughs> yeah. I've got a penalty against him. Yeah, slow a, motion can only be so slow, points. I guess. Hevesy and Hevesy up there. Second down, about 16. Scott Hevesy looking to throw. As he's been on the near side, Hamill complete pass. And a gain of about uh, eight. About eight. Eric Hamill catches the ball, pushed out of bounds. Well, so much for always having uh, on the ground, I guess. Can't we? That was a good way to keep things uh, a little bit honest out there, though. Again, uh, from the defense, throw a pass out there, and they, they think, hey, Hans going to keep it up. Ball at 42, third down and about seven. High formation. Hevesy looking to throw across the middle. There's his man. Complete pass to uh, Waller. There you go. 
Peter Lawler across the 40, first down for him. On, on the numbers again, I mean, that's not throwing to a seam either, as far as I could see. Uh, boy, he was right in the bunch of, amongst a bunch of troops. A lot of blue jerseys out there, and that ball came in, and uh, Scott Hennessy hit him right between the eight and the two. Yeah, right, right. Hand first down. Couldn't have been much better. First down. How first about down that? hand. First and 10 to the 39. And as two receivers put to the left, and a delay to Hamill. Hamill's got a little room. And a good gain by yep. Eric Hamill. He gained about eight. Yep. Yeah, we haven't seen Eric uh, really break one open. I think he's probably surprised a lot of people coming off the bench and being able to do such an outstanding job this year. Now they know he's out there and start to key on a little bit. And uh, certainly with him, you've got you've to take it slow as you come on up on him. As he's got some awful quick moves, and he's going to put you out of position. A little over eight-yard gain by Eric Hamill. And now Chris Barras breaks a run, heading for the uh, left sideline, one man to beat. And he's out of bounds inside the five-yard line, first and goal for Hamm. Yeah, first and goal. Nice run. Right? Chris uh, got through the line with him. The men gave him, his, uh, gave him all as he needed to break loose. And Chris did a good job of picking up a block from uh, Sean Lynch on the left side. Sean Lynch was able to stay out there in the way and uh, give him a little bit more extra running room. And there was one man left that was going to bring Chris down and uh, I'll run out of territory there. Chris tried to get inside him, couldn't quite do it, and ran out of bounds. First and goal at the four-yard line. McGrath and Lotto. And here goes Doris. Doris heading for the end zone. Oh, no. He's got it. Touchdown. I think Damn. that's going to be number three for Chris today, isn't it? Uh, at least three. Ah, I three so. Another hand touchdown. So Daniel Hand extends the lead. With the score hand, 26. No rain, nothing. 26 to nothing. Hand is leading Notre Dame and Fairfield with 8.31 left on the clock. John Lynch will attempt the kick. Tim Hevesy is the snapper. Brother Scott is the holder. And John Lynch puts it up. Good kick. How about 27 to John nothing. John Lynch's extra point is good. Score hand 27. Notre Dame nothing. Well, how about that? I think hand kept going very, very aggressively on that. Didn't go conservative at all, and I'm not real surprised at that, to be honest with you. Ken. After Hand's uh, fourth touchdown, they will kick off back to Notre Dame. Three receivers uh, inside the 10 for Notre Dame. Sean Lynch will hit it at the 40 on the near hash mark. And he hits it to the near sideline. And it hits and bounces out of bounds. Well, let it bounce out of bounds. A good way to get it out at the 35 or get it into play for the 35. Sean Lynch's kickoff goes out of bounds. Come on, offense. Come on. Well, that's as good offense as they've had almost. The uh, one series the where they moved the ball bounds. well from Notre Dame. <clears throat> they have a good field position as they start out here at the 35-yard line. Tiny bit of wind, but nothing that's really a factor today, Ken. I've been here at this field when it's been nothing but a gale, it seems like. <laughs> Frank, in the fourth quarter here, we've got some uh, people playing uh, new positions out here. I see Mike Richards is in an inside linebacker for Chris Doris. That's right. He's using their back up. Uh, a good run by Notre Dame and up the middle and uh, finally tackled by uh, Mark Gumkowski and Rob Dezima at the 45. Boy, the worst and worst tackles. And, and probably part of that, though, because, like you say, Ken, a lot of new assignments out there, even some players like Mike Richards, who a lot of time is in there as a uh, defensive end. Um, he's out there in a the linebacker slot. So, you know, you're going to have some different looks when you first get out there. And there are some other, other people getting some uh, more time. You know, with a score like this, you're going to have that sort of thing happen. But here he comes up the center again. And nope, moves to the outside. The near side and nice. dragged down by uh, 86. That's Eric Frey. Yeah. In fact, uh, Frank, we'll apologize but, uh, to the parents, but there are at least two people all playing for hand out there whom we do not have on the roster. That's right. So we can't identify them. Sorry about that. That's right. We'll try to get... Uh, There's a 57 there that we don't have on our roster. Nice tackle by Eric Freyden. Again, staying home, 
In 81, I don't have on my roster either. So we don't know who they are, but their parents know who they are. So a run around the left end and a good gain down the left sideline and almost all the way, but finally tackled. Uh, I didn't see who oh, they did. Quintero. Number 88, yeah, uh, that's Quintero. Quintero. Yeah, that's from a couple of years ago. That's Danny, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Dan Quintero made that good. tackle on the sidelines nice to save a touchdown. Team. Yeah, I saw his uh, mom and dad, uh, Alice and Bob, here uh, earlier. Uh, good going on that, Dan. Shoestring tackle, save a touchdown at that moment. Notre Dame is uh, down to the 17-yard line. Well, we got 6.55 left, Ken. And a run right up the middle, and a uh, good yardage, and finally tackled by Eric Frey, but uh, down to the five. So Notre Dame is taking it uh, down the field on hand, but this is basically hand's second unit in there. Yeah, that's right. What you're looking at is a lot of players will be around so for a couple, okay. couple more years, as a matter of fact. Good time to get some experience the out there. The only starter I see in there for hand are Rob Dezima still in. And Andy Drennan. And Andy Drennan is still in, but Andy, yeah, yes, he's a linebacker. I believe everybody else is uh, second unit. Justin Valla is right. in there. I was just going to call his number two. the left side and headed for the end zone. Touchdown. Right. Right. And road. They the ball for just inside touchdown. the marker on the far side of the field for their first score to bring the score now to 27 to 6. We're down to 6-12 left in the ball game. That's 6-12 in the ball game, but uh, first unit against second unit. And like I say, the most valuable part of that particular touchdown uh, is on hand is getting some experience for their uh, troops. A lot of youth out there, a lot of chance for them. They'll be playing together next year, a lot of them. And, uh, Mark Gumkowski is in there. Ben Guanapero. I already called Vala. Vala's a good looking young man. he got some good size on him. Eric Frey is in. And Notre Dame's going to go for a two point conversion. Yeah, well, why not, I guess, huh? It's okay. They're looking to throw across the middle, and they got it. it's a complete pass. That wasn't pass, it's so complete. Notre Dame gets it's the two-point two conversion. Good, makes the score of hand, 27, 27 Notre Dame, 8. Looks like Hand is expecting an onside kick here, Frank. They got a lot of men up front. Yeah, they got all good hands up front, and that's and what they get. That's what they're getting. Oh. And the ball bounced around, and it's loose. It's loose. That's our ball. The Notre Dame coach beside us is assured that uh, Notre Dame has the ball. God! <laughs> but the referee does not agree. <laughs> I, I, I don't see how we could have expected that. There were three hand, hand kids all around it. It did bounce a little bit loose there for a while. But uh, <laughs> I didn't see who came up with that ball, but there were three hand players uh, there. The student it's body came up with it, really. But, uh, at the I didn't know Hevesy was down on it, for one thing. But uh, hey, <laughs> there they go. Good field position. 48-yard line, Ken. I hear the tiger gets cranked up on the band over there. Let's see what hand does. Eric Hamill, and he's hit right near the line of scrimmage. Not much gain. Eric Hamill on the carry. Stopped by Sean Wright and Mike Coco. Kind of nice to see Eric break one though, you know that? He hasn't, uh, he's done a lot of good uh, yeoman work today and he's probably got some pretty good numbers. I believe that's Chad Davis who's at center now, isn't it? Well, let's take a look. 77. Eric Hamill up the middle, oh! breaks the tackle. Almost. And he's within a yard of a first down. Eric Hamill on the carry, stopped by Evan Bernard. Almost broke it. Are you just talking about that? He almost did. But, but again, like I said, he must have some pretty good numbers on the game. Uh, uh, you know, it hasn't been as flashy numbers as we've seen in the uh, games past, but certainly some good numbers. Ah, here's an interesting play. Uh, and the quarterback is Mark Gumkowski for the first time this year, I believe. And you're think, right. Taking a place of uh, Scott Hevesy. Yeah, and Chad Davis, as you said, is doing the centering. 
So Mark Gumkowski, the quarterback, and he's going to pitch this time to uh, Eric Hamill on the right side. The ball is loose, and it comes back to uh, Gumkowski. Here's a flag down. Yeah. Well, usually that's going to be a holding, but maybe not. It's coming from a little bit different side of the field. Oh. Yeah, blocking. An illegal block by hand, which will take them back. Yes, sir. We're down to four and a half minutes left in this ball game. Oh, that runs it back away. Okay, third down and a whole bunch. <laughs> For the second unit for hand that's out there right now. Let's watch the young men go at it. The ball is about the 38. Jim McGrath and Law are going wide. Certainly a passing situation. Chad Davis in at center. Mark Gumkowski at quarterback. Handed off to Greg Deaconcellius, who's hit after about a three yard gain. That will bring up fourth and long. Greg Deaconcellius on a carry. Stopped by Sean Wright and Troy Maxwell. So we're now down to near four minutes left in the ball game. <laughs> oh, okay, a little bit of turnover of uh, white shirts on the sideline. Change over, give a little protection. I'm sure that uh, Sean Lynch, yeah, he's out there, will be doing the kicking chores. And uh, now we've got out there, uh, we've got some of the first unit out there to do the protection for him. Also see what kind of coverage hand gets down there. Got one receiver back for uh, Notre Dame, and it's kicked away from the receiver and a good roll. The ball will roll dead down inside the 20. <laughs> all right. Well, it's uh, pushed him back into a hole, all right. Uh, see who hand brings back out on the field to uh, give him some more exercise. That kick uh, won't hurt uh, Sean's average too so much. Uh, they got a good, good roll on that one at the 13-yard line. That was a heavy pressure on him too because an awful lot of uh, awful lot of uh, blue shirts coming in on him, and he he held it out there and really got his leg into it. Nice, nice kick. Nice kick, nice roll. I see uh, also uh, number 20 out there. That's a new 20 number. 20 is Mike, uh, excuse me. Oh. 20 is Matt Tenbrunsel. That's right. He, he was wearing a different Mike. shirt, I think, earlier in the season. Second so uh, let's give him a little publicity, see how he does. We have 88, Dan Guinaparo in. Okay. 86, Eric Frey, and we have a number nine who uh, I also do not have on my yeah, roster. I got that earlier. Uh, yeah, Rocco Buschetta. Number nine is Rocco Buschetta. All right. Pass play oh, by Notre Dame. Oh Looking to throw it long. Bombs away. And bombs away is right. Just overthrown. Incomplete pass. Okay. Long pass play. They almost had the quarterback sacked back there, too. Real close. Third and ten. He did have to unload that. It was uh, open field, but he, he unloaded a little bit too strongly. So we're now inside of three minutes left in the ball game, and uh, as long as Notre Dame has it, this last three minutes are going to go slowly, Frank, because they'll probably air it out. I think so. Third down and ten. At the 13. Oh, another pass, looking pass. Play across right. the middle, uh, it's incomplete pass. The okay. coverage there was by Dan Guinaparo. That bring up fourth and ten. That's right, and uh, that'll be fourth from the 12 yard line. So, um, are they going to pass again? Will they kick it out of there? Uh, I know they don't want to give the ball up. But if they give it up here with fourth down, a hand timeout, out. Notre Dame. A timeout by Notre Dame before they get this next play. Go and kick. Fourth down for Notre Dame at about the 13, and they have a, their punter near the end zone. I don't think there'll be any any tricky kicks. And it's oh. a fairly short punt up, and a pretty good roll, though, for Notre Dame. Down uh, inside the uh, 45, about the 43. And Daniel Hand gets the ball back with two and a half minutes left in this ball game. Alan Walker is down. The unit down that Hand brings back out. Line will be first and ten for the Hand Tigers. 
You know, this is one of those times of a game when if you don't have, if some guys are hurting a little bit, you know, old sore ankles, you don't need to put them out there, but good chance to put some veterans out and kind of intermix them with the, with the younger guys uh, so that they can uh, help them, show them what's going on. We do have uh, Davis in for centering. Chad Davis is in. Mark Gumkowski will continue to quarterback. And off this time to Greg Deconcilius, and the pile goes backwards in a pretty good game. Well, we gained six or seven yards. Yeah, we know that Deconcilius is a done good to be the run, uh, running back Greg out there. And he's the he's done a lot of that when he's had to. So uh, he's, he's got some good opportunity to, to take some distance, if you would. Uh, we do have some of the, a couple other young men in there, though. Donnelly is still in there uh, to give his veteranship, if you will. Veteranship, I like that veteranship. word. Veteranship, <laughs> yes. I don't know if that's a legal Webster's word, but we'll, we'll coin it as a hand word. Second down, uh, Mark Gumkowski keeps the ball, and he gets about a yard. So that'll bring up third down about four. Yeah. And a moving clock, if you will. Stop by Pedro Ray. Notre Dame takes their second time out with 1.36 left in the ball game. After Notre Dame's timeout, that'll bring up third and four for Hand. And oh. quarterback Heber, and he's yes. going forward. He's got a first yes. down. A little help from his friends out there, if you will. Mark Gumkowski being pushed from behind, it looked like. Well, Chad Davis came off his center position and really did a nice thrust himself. He also had uh, Rob DeZemer on the guard slot, and uh, boy, they just put some good muscle out there. And we know Rob is uh, one well of a strong guy. First and 10 from the 31. Rob DeZemer. So uh, with that first down, Hand can uh, about uh, run it out on this series. Mark Gumkowski goes back on one knee, and uh, now it's knocked over. But the clock is continuing to run, and we're down to one minute left in the ball game. Yep. Hand is leading 27 to 8, and has got this one safely tucked away. It looks like, and we did have a nice turnout from Hand coming down here. Certainly, uh, the fans making the trek down here on Saturday morning. And uh, you can see the Royals over there with the band and uh, having a nice opportunity to... Uh, See the boys develop, not just to go in a, another win for the year. Mark Gumkowski back and kneels down, and the clock continues to roll down to a half a minute left in the ball game. I really think this is a great opportunity when you as a, a football program have the opportunity to get some good varsity time in for your, uh, uh, for your younger, younger troops, uh, particularly a, a quarterback to take some snaps under pressure. And, all that sort of approach, Kent. So the clock is running. We're down to 10 seconds left, and Hand is in no hurry. And counting. we count it down. Five seconds. And that will That's the end of the ball game. End the ball game. Hand Tigers 27, Notre Dame Lancers 8. So, uh, Frank, uh, it was a little bit sloppy beginning, but at least they didn't carry over too much into the second half. Or at least the uh, rough stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think we ought to give game stars to probably both coaches for going into the locker room at halftime and cooling some pretty hot heads that were going out there. You know, and I think they, they need to deserve some credit for doing that. Uh, the overall game story, I think, is possession by hand. Uh, certainly the first half, much, much more possession. On the other hand, Notre Dame, third period, did get a pretty good uh, shot with the ball for about nine minutes there, but that was all they could muster. And Hand uh, got in uh, darn near their whole squad playing. It was good to see Peter Clark get into action for the first time all season. Uh, we understand that Tim Cunningham will probably be back next game. Matt Gentile, Gentile played quite a bit tonight, so uh, he still has a sore shoulder, but he has been playing a lot wow. as a receiver, and very well as a receiver, I might add. Oh, excellent. Uh, uh, Matt Gentile certainly did have a great game today. Uh, from taking both offense and defense wise. And I uh, also want to give some more credit. It's good to see the uh, uh, Derek Donays down there on the sideline. He's starting to do some working out now. He's had a rough season, as we all know, uh, from the collapsed lung. But he's back starting to do some working out now. Uh, but he's always down there on the sidelines. He's down there cheering the kids on and adding that little bit more of a general uh, command, if you will, from a senior veteran. Before we sign off, Frank, uh, let's mention next week. That's the big one. Uh, Notre, Notre Dame of West Haven, the number one ranked team in the state, 
Um, and the number one ranked team last year uh, is playing hand at Strongfield in Madison next Friday night, and they are a powerhouse team. So if uh, the hand team uh, could hold their own with that team, uh, they would really show something. Well, let me tell you, it would not be the first time that hand has taken them on when Notre Dame was highly ranked. Uh, through the years, I can go back maybe 10 years worth of time here, that uh, Hand has come up against West Haven, Notre Dame, and uh, uh, taken them on and actually overpowered them. So it is certainly going to be a whale of a game. I'm looking forward to it. But uh, they have uh, this Derek Salmana or whatever his name is. Uh, I can't pronounce the thing. Whoever is uh, the big running back for Notre Dame, and he certainly is a Division One caliber player and apparently a, a fine young man, both offense, defense-wise. Be good just to see him play because we may be hearing about him on uh, one of the networks at some time in the future. Okay, well that uh, will complete this game. Uh, game seven. Daniel Hand is now seven and zero with a victory today, Halloween morning, uh, against Notre Dame of Fairfield. The final score is Daniel Hand 27 and uh, Notre Dame of Fairfield eight. This is Kent Sprague with Frank and Frank. Uh, appreciate your help today. Always fun. Uh, Paul Sprague behind the camera and Lynn Richards uh, directing it. Uh, our next game is the big one against uh, Notre Dame of West Haven. So good night for tonight.